Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the Dominaria set review for Blue. So we've gone over white, I'm in my blue shirt now. Let's get into some blue cards, starting with Academy Drake here. This is a three minute two two Drake with the kicker for four with flying. If Academy Drake was kicked, it enters a battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. Uh, this is a common, so it's actually gonna show up quite a lot uh, in the actual draft and sealed pool. So seven mana make it a four four flyer. That's not terrible, but it's not great either. I do think a three minute two two flyer though is quite good though in draft and sealed, so you'll probably pick it for that. And if you get into seven mana in the late game, then this will be a seven mana four four which is not bad again either especially since it's so flexible for us moving up here to the next card we have academy journey mage love the art on this card this card is super fun to look at this is a five out of three two human wizard this spell costs one colorless less to cast if you control a wizard uh, when academy journal journey mage enters the battlefield or turn target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand so it's a five mana three two that can turn into a four mana three two and bounce something on their opponent's side of the field it's a common so you're going to see it quite a bit um so if you get into the wizard archetype in draft and seal this card might actually be a good like top ender here to hopefully bounce a big bomb or a token on their side of the field besides that not really going to see this outside of the uh this draft and sealed meta game though um i would love to see this card in standard because the art is so cool but sadly we probably will not uh, let's move on here we have the antiquities war this is a four mana enchantment saga and of course as this saga enters the battle after your draw step draw or add an additional lore counter sacrifice after three the art on this card, ridiculous. Love the art. Again, a lot of the art on uh, Dominaria is just so amazing to me. But chapter one and two here, or look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any random order. Not bad. And then number three is artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness five five until end of turn. This feels very pushed for a rare, and I feel like it's probably going to be seeing a lot of like weird artifact standard play um, because of that. I think in Draft and Sealed, if you get into this, you probably want to make sure you pull into a lot of artifacts as well in your Draft and Sealed pool. Um, I think this card is very, very good. And again, there are quite a few artifacts in the set as well for Draft and Sealed. So this card is good. I feel like all around, um, I don't think we'll see this as like modern or anything like that, but I do think in standard Draft and Sealed, this card is quite amazing. Moving on to the next card here, we have Arcane Flight. Uh, this is a one blue mana enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has flying. Um, very simple, very straightforward. This card is also really, really good though in uh, draft, sealed, and probably gonna be seeing some standard play in a blue white auras or maybe an is it auras, which is a blue red auras uh, deck list here. Um, also the art on this card, it's just meme worthy. It's, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, the cat's like, I must fly. It's my turn, you know? Like, this card is so fun. I like it a lot. Uh, Artificer's Assistant here. It's a one blue mana, one one uh, bird with flying. Whenever you cast a historic spell, scry one. Again, historics are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So that's a really good way for us to know that this card's probably going to see quite a bit of play in the uh, draft and sealed pool. However, since it is a common and it's just a 1-1 flyer, I do think that this will probably not see any kind of standard play, but it is quite fun regardless. Uh, moving up here, we have Befuddle. This is a three mana instant. Target creature gets negative four, negative zero until end of turn, draw a card. This card is very fun um, and very useful in draft and sealed. Uh, very good combat trick for blue. And of course it has card advantage with card draw as well. So very good there. Not gonna see any kind of standard play though. Moving on here, we have Blink of, the, of an Eye. This is a two mana instant with kicker for two. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If it was kicked, draw a card so basically into the royal that's not too bad um art on this is very interesting not a big fan of like the eyeballs everywhere so it's kind of, kind of creepy to me uh, but besides that this is a very good uh, combat trick for us a uh, very good uh common card especially in blue uh for the sealed and draft pools moving on here we have cloud reader sphinx this is a five and a three four sphinx flyer when it enters a battlefield scry two so another good blue creature for us um a, fi a five and a three four flyer not too terrible uh and being able to scry two is actually gravy on top of that so I would probably take this as a like mid to top end pick for us in blue if we're in that color in draft and sealed. Uh, moving on here, we have Cold Water Snapper. This is a six mana four five with hexproof. This is basically like a top end bomb for you uh, in draft and sealed. It may not do much, but it is a four five for the big butt, and it has hexproof. So if opponent has any kind of removal spell, it's not going to be targeting the, the snapper here. So I think that's awesome, and I think the art on this is just great as well. It's like get out of my way. I'm going to be chopping right through. 
<laughs> Fun card here. Moving up here, we have Curator's Ward. This is a three minute enchantment aura. Enchant permanent. Enchanted permanent has hexproof, already good. When enchanted permanent leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, can draw two cards. So if this is onto a uh, like artifact creature, then this card is ridiculous for us. I do think this card is very, very good. Might see some like weird standard brew ability uh, because it can give something hexproof as well as draws two cards if it's a historic thing like an artifact creature or a legendary. Um, I think this card is very, very good. Um, and of course, it's enchant permanent as well, so we could choose an enchantment or a saga as well. So I think this card just overall has a lot of potential to see some good play there. However, in uh, draft and seal, this card might be a little weird, um, but I think overall, since, since it's giving hexproof, it might be fine. I don't really know yet as far as the testing there. It's just kind of one of those weird cards where it's like, it could be amazing and standard because of the card pool, but it could also be terrible, but it could also be like terrible in just draft and sealed because it's very awkward at three mana there. Uh, moving up here, we have Deep Freeze. Love the art here. This is a three mana enchantment aura. Uh, and uh, enchant creature has base power and toughness 0-4. It has defender, loses all other abilities, and is a blue wall in addition to its other colors and types. Uh, Deep Freeze is a great lockdown spell for us. Uh, and it's only a common as well, so very, very good for blue. Um, love the art here, love the ability. I think this card is very good. However, it does give our opponent a 0-4 wall, so that is something we have to get over eventually. Uh, but I do think, otherwise, if it's like a 5-5 like monster creature, Deep Freeze is going to lock it down very good for us, or very well for us. Moving on here, we have Diligent Excavator. This is a two mana creature artificer. This is a one three. Whenever you cast a historic spell, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. So this is actually a mill card and we haven't had a mill card in like a whole set, <laughs> I feel like. Um, I think this card is quite good. Um, there are not a lot of artifacts that actually kind of like synergize with mill right now in standard or draft and sealed. Um, mill in standard, or mill in draft and sealed rather, uh, is usually not that great. It's usually kind of terrible. So this is one of those cards where it's like, it's okay because it's a 1-3 because uh, it can just be like a top end blocker if you want it to be, or like a, you know, early to mid game blocker. Um, but it's also okay for us because it's just a good way to mill cards if we get into milling uh, for like a casual standard deck. Maybe this comes into play more so in like a uh, weird brawl deck for that kind of format, but I'm not really seeing much for this. It is an uncommon as well, so it has like probably some playability, but I just don't see it just yet. Moving up here, we have Divination, a three mana sorcery. Draw, draw two cards. Very simple, very straightforward. Like the art in this as well. Um, I think this card is fun, and uh, we'll probably see play in Draft Sealed, maybe even Standard, because Divination is a card that usually sees Standard play. Moving up here, we have Hammerid Explorer. This is a four mana three three Hammerid Scout. And then when Hammerid Explorer enters the battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. So another mill card here so there might be a good mill like draft and sealed pool we could go into um i do like this because it's a four mana three three that's okay um but it also mills our opponent so i think that's really good especially during those grindy matches if you have lots of good lockdown against your opponent since you are playing blue this could be a good way to do that um also if you have anything that has any kind of like graveyard interaction or you want to get it back from the graveyard this card might help as well because it is target player so it could choose yourself or your opponent that's interesting too um and plus you know the art in this it's pretty fun. Makes me want to go to Red Lobster. <laughs> Moving up here, we have Inbolus's Clutches. This is a six mana legendary enchantment aura. Enchanted permanent. You control enchanted permanent. Enchanted permanent is legendary, so that means uh, you basically just take whatever your opponent has on the side of the field. This was a there was another card in uh, I believe Hour of Devastation that did a similar thing here for the similar amount of mana. Loved it in Draft and Sealed. This card is going to be very good once you get to six mana in Draft and Sealed. I think it's very very good. Not a big fan of this for us standard at all because it is quite high, uh, but I do think the six mana you know basically control enchanted permanent are, is very very awesome for us so get into this if you're in draft and sealed in blue moving on here we have karn's temporal sundering the art on this card ridiculous just straight up amazing noah bradley you have outdid yourself here six mana legendary source room target player takes an extra turn after this one return up to one target non-land permanent to its owner's hand exile karn's temporal sundering this card is super good uh, for us if we want to get into a like a turn style situation. Um, not really sure of the validity of this in draft or sealed, um, but I think in standard this might be see some play somewhere. Um, it is six mana though, so it is quite high. So I think this card is probably just gonna be like maybe like a one-off rare in draft and sealed where it's just like it kind of comes out of nowhere, you're not expecting it. Um, but I think this card otherwise is fantastic. It's fantastic and it is a lot of flavorful good fun. Uh, moving up here for us, we have Merfolk Trickster, a 2-mana 2-2 two two Merfolk Wizard with Scout, or Flash, not Scout. 
<laughs> Where did Scout come from? When Merfolk Trickster enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls, it loses all abilities until end of turn. This is just a really good card for us for the uh, standard Merfolk deck. I think this card is going to be a great inclusion in there. And I think in Draft and Seal, this card is actually quite good too, because it's a two mana flasher for two uh, that can just come in and basically make a creature lose all of its abilities until end of turn. So if it's a creature with Hexproof or something like that, or not, not a creature with Hexproof, if it's a creature with um, something that uh, we don't like when they're attacking in, we can just do this, lock down their creature for the turn basically. And uh, maybe trade with it if we need to. Moving on here, we have the Mirai Conjecture, a five mana enchantment saga. Uh, chapter one here, return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. Very good. Tur chapter two here, return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, very, very good as well. Chapter three, until end of turn, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This is actually not terrible. It feels like a card that you would want to build like a kitchen table deck around in standard. For draft and seal, though, this card is quite awkward. Um, you're really not going to have that many cards you want to replay. By the time you get to where you have five mana enough or five, enough mana to cast this spell uh, in Draft and Sealed, you might have maybe one or two instant sorceries in the graveyard, so this might be okay for the chapter one and chapter two. Um, but chapter three, though, being able to copy spells, I'm not that excited about it. Um, there might be some use for it, though, and I'm not, not just seeing it yet in the Draft and Sealed pool. But I think this is probably just a casual card for, uh, you know, either Brawl, you know, Commander, or maybe even uh, just regular kitchen table standard. Moving up here, we have Nabon, Dean of Iteration. This is a two mana, two one human wizard. If a wizard entered the battlefield under your control, causes a triggered ability of a permanent control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is a very interesting card and a very good indicator that there might be a really good wizard travel deck in the actual standard pool here. Uh, for draft and seal though, this is just a two mana, two one that might have a secondary ability if we have another wizard in our deck here. Um, it is a rare, so it does mean we're not gonna get into this card multiple times, and there's not a lot of wizards that we've seen too, uh, as far as like getting into that you'll have like a big plethora to pick from uh, in the actual draft and sealed pool. So I'm not too sure about this card yet for draft and sealed, but I do think in standard there might be just barely enough for this card to work. Uh, next up here we have Naru Miha, Master Wizard. If I, you know, butchered that name there, forgive me. <laughs> This is a four mana legendary creature, Human Wizard 3 3. It's a mythic also, and it has flash. When it enters a battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell, new control. You may choose new targets for the copy. It also has a, a board wide pump here. Other wizards you control get plus one plus one. So I really like this card a lot. It's doing a lot of things. Um, so this could be a great indicator if you pull this into your draft and steel pool to try and like kind of push into wizards if you can. Um, but if not, though, there's a lot of wizards that kind of just like kind of do their own thing. And this is kind of one of them. If if we have an uh, instant sorcery spell, we got we would like to uh, control as well or use as well. So four mana three three with a, kind of a redirection ability, that's fine. Or copy ability, that's fine. It also has flash, that's fine as well. So if you're getting into this for draft and seal for that, you could play it for that reason alone. For standard, again, there could be enough here for a good wizard tribal deck. Uh, next up here we have opt, very good card. Uh, one blue mana instant scry one, draw a card. Very simple, very straightforward. Love the art here as well, and I think this card is going to get a lot of use in every format it's going to be played in, uh, which of course is draft, sealed, standard, and everything else in between. Uh, next up here we have Precognition Field, a four mana en enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library. You may cast the top card of your library if it's, if it's an instant or sorcery card, and we can pay three, exile the top card of your library. So this is a very interesting rare for us in standard. Could it lead into a lot of really cool combos, not really sure yet, uh, but in draft and sealed, this card is kind of okay. It's not terrible. But it is a great way to get through uh, some lands if you don't want to kind of deal with any kind of lands or you already have enough lands as it is and you want to get into some more creatures or bombs or removal in your deck. This card is kind of good for that in Draft and Seal. Moving on from this card, we have Relic Runner. This is a two mana, two on human rogue. Uh, Relic Runner can't be blocked if you if you cast a historic spell this turn. So again, that's historic spells or artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. Like the art here, I feel like there's enough unblockables in standard right now. We could actually probably make a, like an unblockable deck um, with, you know, kind of like this the sub theme here where we can just cast artifacts or whatever or legendaries or whatever um i think this card is quite good in uh like standard i think this card is okay in draft and sealed if we get into a lot of artifacts this card will be a lot better but i think right now this card is just okay i wish it was kind of 2-2 two -two instead of 2-1 that would make this card a little bit better in my eyes uh, but it is a common so you're probably gonna see quite a lot of them uh, moving up here we have rescue it's a one blue mana instant return target permanent you control to its owner's hand this card is okay in draft and sealed i think it's great against uh, like a bunch of removal uh, in the format i think this card is probably gonna be seeing some play too and like weird like kitchen table brews and standard as well maybe even brawl for sure um, 
Um, but I think in Draft and Seal, this card is just okay for helping, you know, helping to get you your, uh, you know, big, big bomb away from removal. Uh, next up here, we have Sage of Latinam. Latinum? 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 <laughs> this is a two mana one two human artificer. Sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. Uh, this is an enchantment. Or en enchantment. This is an uncommon. Um, it's quite good. Uh, I think this card is going to be seeing a lot of use in uh, draft and steel if you get into a lot of artifacts. And this card might see some play in a standard like weird artifact deck since Kaladesh and Aether Revolt are still in standard. We still have quite a few artifacts in the format to choose from. And this card might be in that kind of deck there. I like this a lot. Uh, moving on here, we have Sentinel of the Pearl Trident. Uh, this is a five mana three three Murpho soldier with flash that alone is probably okay but when it enters the battlefield you may exile target historic permanent you control if you do return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next incept so it does like kind of flicker an artifact or a historic card for you uh, which is not bad so if they ha also have another enter the battlefield ability you can trigger it an additional time with this card i think in draft and seal this card might be okay however i think in standard this card is probably not that great since it is five mana to get this off so probably just only good for like a draft and sealed combo thing like a small combo uh, maybe you Useful in a brawl deck, but for standard itself, this card is too slow. Uh, moving up here, we have Slenvada, the Rising Deeps, the 7 mana 8 8, Leviathan with Kicker for 2, so you can pay 10 mana for this if you need to. Um, when it enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, return all creatures to their owner's hand, except for Merfolk, Krakens, Leviathans, Octopuses, and Serpents. So, if you're running that deck in standard or draft or sealed, this card is a huge bomb, <laughs> but it doesn't have, again, any kind of, like, protection from itself, like, no hexproof, nothing like that, so if it gets cast and your opponent, like, kills it immediately, don't feel bad for spending 10 mana, uh, but if you do get into it and it kind of gets off and it's in it to attacks for one, one or two turns, this card could just end the game for you and close that really quickly, so it does an uncommon as well, so you're going to see probably a couple of them uh, in the draft and sealed pool, so make sure to get into it if you need a top end bomb in blue. Next up here, we have Syncopy. Okay, this is a card that I haven't seen since, I guess, Return to Ravnica? I think that's the, the block it was in. It's X in blue. You can an instant. Counter target spell unless its controller pays X. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. So this card is probably going to see some play in a, uh, a standard deck right now. There are quite a few cards that have quite a bit of uh, graveyard recursion, like Scrap Heap Scrounger. Um, things like that. Um, I think Sync of Paint will be useful, especially in that set. I think in uh, Draft and Seal, this card is just going to be like a one-off kind of like a counter card, and that's just fine if you're into blue. Um, but overall, I think this card is going to see a lot of good play in Standard. Uh, next up here, we have Tempest Jin. This is a 3 blue, 0 4 flyer. Tempest Jin gets plus 1 plus 0 for each basic island you control. Um, this is a rare, so I think this card is going to see a lot of play in Standard somewhere. Just don't know where just yet. Uh, but if you get this into a uh, Draft and sealed pool then this card is probably going to push you into blue a lot since it is triple blue here uh, but if you have a lot of islands on the battlefield this could turn into a 3-4 a 4-4 even a 5-4 flyer depending on how many islands you control so i think this card is very very good and a good reason to get into blue if you like this as a, an aggressive threat here uh, next up for us we have tetsuko umazawa umazawa yeah that's a tetsuko umazawa fugitive uh, this is a two mana one three legendary creature human rogue creatures you control of power or toughness one or less can't be blocked so so this is actually kind of the reason that I think that there's going to be like an unblockable deck in the uh, like, you know, standard pool here. Power or toughness. It's not power and toughness. It's power or toughness. So if it's a 2-1 or a 3-1, something like that, they can't be blocked. That's very interesting. And I think this card is going to see quite a lot of play in those formats. I think in Draft and Seal, this card is just okay. Um, it's a 1-3, so it does mean it's unblockable itself uh, because of its own ability. So I think this card is super interesting. Um, so if you get into a lot of one like 1-3s or 1-1s one or 2-1s, you might want to play this card in the Draft and Seal pool. We did see a lot of 2-1s earlier, so this card might be a good reason to play that there as well. Um, next up for us, we we have Time of Ice. Love the art in this right here. This is a four mana enchantment saga. Chapter one and two, tap target creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control Time of Ice. Chapter three, return all tapped creatures to their owner's hand. So very decent. Um, not that amazing as far as um, like for the four mana here. I would like to be have this like maybe three mana because it is only tapping one thing per turn. But I think that chapter three is actually not too bad. If opponent like uh, attacks out or we have everything tapped down and we can just kind of like, you know, bounce everything back to their hand. I think that's fine. It can end a game in Draft and Sealed, but I think we're probably not going to see this at all in Standard. It, it, is a, it is an uncommon as well, so you're not going to see that many of them in Draft and Sealed either. Uh, moving on here, we have Tolarian Scholar. It is a 3-minute 2-3 wizard. That's it. Very simple. Very straightforward. Um, this card is fun, and I think a 3-minute 2-3 is just okay. You know, I think they'll probably see play uh, in Draft and Sealed, and uh, the art is nice. <laughs> moving up here, we have Unwind. This is a 3-minute instant. Uh, Counter-target non-creature spell, untap up to three lands. 
Uh, this card is very pushed. Uh, it's also a common, so this card is probably going to see a lot of good play in uh, probably draft sealed and even standard. It's basically an extra mana negate, but it untaps your lands, so it's basically, you know, giving you a free counterspell. While I do think the one extra land here uh, for this versus a negate is quite important, I do think, though, that this card is probably going to see enough play uh, to warrant it to be into standard as well, because it is, uh, is untapping three lands. I think this card is probably just going to see play just basically anywhere it's going to see play <laughs> available, like, you know, Brawl, draft seal this card is very very good i think that yard as well is nice too um moving up here we have Voldir vodalian 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 like i i give up <laughs> arcanus this is a two mana one three merfolk wizard keep in mind we have that legendary that makes it unblockable with this um we can tap it add the colorless spin this mana only to cast instant or sorcery spells this is interesting um maybe this will see play in like a weird draft and sealed deck i'm not really sure we'll see this in a like standard deck it does kind of give me that weird like this might be a Brawl Chief of Compliance deck kind of thing. So we might see play, or this might see play in that kind of uh, deck there. Um, but I do think in Draft and Sealed, it's just a 2 mana 1-3, and that's fine. It can also give a instant sorcery and extra mana, so that's fine too. So I think in Draft and Sealed, it'll see some play. Uh, but I think in Standard, it might see some play in a weird, like, you know, uh, counters deck or something like that. Uh, moving on here, we have Weight of Memory. This is a 5 mana sorcery. Draw 3 cards. Target player puts the top 3 cards of their library into their graveyard. So this is not bad. It's is a five mana draw three sorcery so that's going to always see play in draft and sealed also the art here is really fun because it's got karn jura and uh of course teferi very interesting love it a lot and i love the uh the flavor text here it says in lives that have stretched for centuries there are bound to be a few awkward silences and uh i agree with that <laughs> moving up here we have wizard's retort this is a three mana instant this spell costs one carless less to cast if you control a wizard counter target spell so this is basically counter spell in standard if we have it um there are probably enough wizards to make a uh, counter deck here and I think this card will be definitely in that deck. Um, in Draft and Sealed, though, this is just a 3-mana counterspell. So, I think that's just fine. And if you have a Wizard on the battlefield, of course, this is just a 2-mana counterspell. And I think that's very, very good, too. So, in Draft and Sealed, if you get into blue, you might want to get into this if you have some Wizards on your side of the field. Uh, moving on here, we have Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp. This is a 6-mana 5-6 Jinn. You may pay 4 and tap an untap artifact you control rather than pay this spell's mana cost. It has flying. And that's it. It's a 6-mana 5-6 or a 4-mana 5-6 with flying. That's very good either way, so I think this is a great rare for you in Draft and Seal. Um, probably won't see any kind of play in, like, Standard at all, but I do think in Draft and Seal this card is quite good. And that is all of the cards for blue for Dominaria. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I think there are probably enough Wizards to make it work in all of Standard to make a Tribal deck for uh, Standard, but I think in Brawl I really want to try and build a Wizard deck too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as well. Uh, but let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next color for Dominaria.